science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it, and eventually, if there's an enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. For newcomers and old timers alike, the Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can we prevent illness, see the signs of disease before it's too late, and care for our birds through ill health? What light does behavioral science shed on their nature, needs, and hopes? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots, let them roam around about you and share a life with them? How much freedom do you give them? What happens if you form a bond of trust with them? Watch and see what understanding their true nature can do for you. Come with us on a journey as we do more than examine a parrot's world. We live in it. Make some popcorn and bring in a few wood blocks. Let everyone have something to chew and a comfortable place to perch. Cockatoot is a presentation of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. Hi, and welcome to Cockatude, Cockatoos with Attitude, episode 57, The Rehomed Bird, The First Month, Pippa and Lucy. Yeah, we've talked a lot about rehoming birds, but uh, we have a special situation. Hi, Laura, why? We have a special situation in that we have two new birds, two new residents, Pippa and Lucy with us. And they both have special circumstances that we need to talk about. And kind of give an overview of what it's like to bring in a new bird and how you work with them uh, using some of the tools of science. You know, some of it's pretty simple. You're just taking weights, you're making sure that they're getting the right kind of food, you're documenting any issues they may have, and you're not going down there to chew on that Baba Lou. I know what you're playing. Come here. You're not going to go over there and play with that, because if you do, you're going to bounce the camera around, and it looks really silly. Okay? Thank you, Bob. So what I'm going to do is, well, first of all, let me introduce everybody. Up on my shoulder is Lorelei, also called Laurel Fly, because she flies everywhere she goes, don't you? You don't walk much. We have with us today Snowball. Hey, Snowball, what's up? And he's got his favorite thing in here, Frisbees, so... He'll probably be tossing those around, won't ya? Won't ya? He says, I don't know, these cameras, maybe not. And the peach. <clears throat> Hi, peaches. Hello, peach. <laughs> Baba Lou. And Lucy girl. Hi, Lucy girl. Hello. She just had her beak reshaped, but we'll talk about that. And sugar, sugar bird. And Salamander. We also have Chloe over there. She popped her head up. Hi, Chloe. So we have to be careful with Snowball because he gets aggressive towards females. And uh, you know, that happened when he was with Chloe. You're not going to play this game with me because I'm going to tickle you if you keep it up. All right? He's trying to get my attention by going over towards the camera. And he's doing it. I'm reinforcing it, so that's not a good thing, is it, Bob? So when I start reinforcing a misbehavior, we got issues, don't we? Don't we, Bob? Don't we? So I have to be careful if I bring him in and keep a really good eye on him. But I figure he'll probably want to play with those frisbees. 
You're going to play with your frisbee? What are you doing? What are you doing up here? You can sit there. I just don't want you messing with her, okay? I know, Peaches, I know. She knows he can be a little out of sorts, so she, she'll keep an eye on him. You're not going to mate with him either, so don't even get that idea in your head. You can get down, but if you do, come here. See, she wants down, but she wants to get next to him. So what I'm doing is putting her over here in a spot where she's not close to him. Yeah, she can be with Bob. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the details, the process of, of how you work with a bird, or how at least how we work with a bird when we first bring one in. And we're going to focus first on Pippa, and then we'll go and we'll focus on Lucy. You're going to, it's going to be a little longer when we're talking about Pippa because we're going to be describing the process too. You stop that. See, he's getting aggressive with, with her. It's a female. You should get on the floor and play with your Frisbees. Come here. You got Frisbees down there. Why don't you get on the floor and play with your Frisbees? Go on. Go play with your Frisbees. Go play with the Frisbees. Go on. Go on. Good boy. Another step towards the Frisbees will probably work. There you go. Yeah. Good boy. That's a good boy. You play with that frisbee. There you go. Good boy. So the first thing you have to do when you bring one in, you try to find out as much as you can about their past. It doesn't matter in a lot of ways um, because you're going to look at their behavior and work with their behavior and their physical being, however their body is, however their behavior is. You're going to work with what you find, but as a setting event, as an idea... We call this like a, like a remote or distant setting events. These are things that set their personality the way they are. So, so with Pippa, so with Pippa, some of the distant things were that she was in a home, so she didn't have as much interaction with her other birds and a lot of people. What you doing down there? You, no, you don't need to come up. You don't need to come up here. No, you don't. I love you. And I would normally allow you to come up if I wasn't concentrating on other stuff. So it's always good if they can come with their own cage. But in her case, um, her former caretaker uh, decided to get her a brand new cage to come down here with. So, so she didn't have that. It's kind of like if you left your home and you went to it and without even knowing you were going to leave home. If you just suddenly woke up in a new place, Bob, quit trying to move your way over there. Um, <clears throat> you woke up in a new place and you didn't have a suitcase, you didn't have any of your stuff, and even the food was a little different. I mean, she has the food she was eating, but she also has other things thrown in her food bowl, so a lot of things have changed for Pippa. So she was in a smaller environment. She didn't have other birds to socialize with. No other birds and only a few people to socialize with. Uh, she didn't get along with women, I was told, which we've confirmed here. If you get her around a woman, she will try to go over and get her. Um, by get, I mean we're talking full body, flying over and biting the first thing she can get into. She hasn't hurt anybody yet. Um, it's only happened twice, and now if she's around women at all, I hold her. Now, keep in mind that you have a bird that has this kind of tendency to defend you. They may turn around and bite you so that they can do what they need to do, which is to go over and stop this other evil thing from being there, to get them away from you. She sort of bonded to me the day she got here, so it's not like I was petting her down the back or anything. I just gave her a normal amount of attention, but... So, you're holding a bird like that by the feet, generally, where you want to hold them. There is a good chance, it didn't happen with her, but there's a good chance that when you're doing that, the bird's going to turn around and bite you. It's nothing against you, it's just a matter of defending you. And what I mean, and I mean it, they're just defending you against the evil that's in the room. And one of the ways they do that is to bite as a warning that you need to leave them alone so they can take care of business. So, one thing you can do in that situation, and I don't recommend this 
um, unless you ha unless it's an absolute necessity. Peaches is an amazing personality. Her daily maintenance requires dedication and mindfulness. She requires two forms of medicine, seven course meals, and effort to entice her to eat. Extensive preening every day, special tools to trim nails, constant attention to her vocalizations, daily walks, and twice yearly checkups due to the possibility of impacted feather follicles and the nature of her spinal injuries. It seems a common misconception among the general public that parrots are like toys in a toy box. Nothing could be further from the truth. They are complex creatures. Recently, scientific studies have shown them to be at least as intelligent as chimpanzees. Every captive parrot needs special humans who will dedicate themselves to understanding them, those who know their species as it lives in the wild. Special people that understand their social, mental, and physical needs. They need to be understood for what they are, and not as merely human companions, as circus performers to bring smiles. Peaches needs all this and more. She is our special girl. Will you help us care for Peaches? Please make a donation today at our website, chloesanctuary.org. That's spelled C-H-L-O-E-S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y dot O-R-G. As a special thank you for your donation, we will joyfully send you a postcard with Peach's happy face. thing you can do in that situation, and I don't recommend this um, unless, you ha unless it's an absolute necessity, because what you're doing is, we call it a negative punishment. Um, negative because you're taking something away, in this case, her balance, which I haven't had to do this to her, but it would be taking away her balance, and then it's punishment because you're either reducing a behavior, okay, or extinguishing it, getting rid of it completely. So that's what negative punishment means. It's not the same as it's used in, in common talk. When you say punishment, normally you're talking about spanking a child or hitting a dog with a newspaper. That's not what punishment is. Punishment is either reducing a behavior or extinguishing it, getting rid of the behavior altogether. <clears throat> so what you, what you do when you're holding her feet, let me show you how. It she tends to grab really tight, so this is gonna be fun. But I wanna show you. Okay, so you're holding a bird by their feet, and they're defending you from someone else. So she's lunging towards someone else. Now, there's a good chance that that beak's gonna come spinning around to get your hand, and what you do is you just rotate your hand forward, and as you can see, her weight goes towards the back of her body. I only did it slightly. But if I were to rotate my hand a full 180 degrees, she'd rock, walk back. Well, she's not going to bite you while she's walking backward and the weight's going the other way. So that's what you would do. Um, don't make a habit of it, but there's times when you have to use that technique, okay? And again, that's not positive reinforcement, except that it works, so it'll reinforce you doing the behavior. And that's not something you want to do on a regular basis. Hi, Snowball, and you got your Frisbee? Oh, that should just drive people crazy when they're watching the video. Yeah, that should drive them nuts. That's something he does, too. He'll, um, and it's a modified mating behavior. He'll take that Frisbee and just tap it, okay? And he'll tap it rhythmically. Sometimes fast, sometimes slow. Sometimes he'll vary it. Do slow, slow, slow. He'll, excuse me, he'll do like slow, slow, fast, 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 slow, slow, fast, fast, fast. You have a pretty good rhythm over there, kid. Yeah, you need to play with your frisbees. Hi, Peach. Hi, Peach. Okay, so, so we find out what we can. Always take everything with a grain of salt. And it's not necessarily that what they're telling you will be wrong, or it will be, come here, get away from there, or that it will be something that's not truthful. But in different environments, we act differently you act differently at Disneyland than you do at the police department, okay? So you expect different behavior in different environments. 
On top of that, they're going to be kind of in shell shock um, when they move to a new place. So with everything changed, the people that are around changed, their environment changed, and in her case, even her cage changed, she's going to step back and try to figure out what to do. Snowball, you don't want to climb up here. Go play with your Frisbees. Here. Here. Let me grab a Frisbee. <laughs> Sorry, Peach. So, so be aware that you're going to have those changes uh, in, in that they're going, to, they're going to modify their... You keep it up. I'm going to put you in your cage. Take you out later, okay? I know you're just trying to get a hold of that thing, and I've got it too close, and that's all that's all that's on your mind. I'm going to try to get my hand on you to stop that. So where was I, Bob? Huh? So we were talking about how birds will modify their behavior. They will change their behavior and act differently for the first couple of weeks they're with you. Right, Pippa? Well, she was... She's always been an extrovert in that she likes being around and out and about and doing things. She's always been that way since she's, she came here. But it's gotten even more so. Now she likes to jump up on me and ride on my shoulder. But when she came here, she wanted to be out, but she wasn't pushy about getting on me. Over the, the last month, she's become pushy about wanting to be out and on me. Careful with a cockatoo. If you let them do that too much, you're going to have a heck of a time getting them off you. And if you have one that holds on like she does for dear life, um, I don't know that that's the reason she does it. But once she gets on, like right now, she's holding pretty tight. You're getting back over here, you big monster. You're not going to get that tripod. Well, they probably will, but we're going to try to stop it if we can, okay? Yes, you're, you're at least listening to me when I tell you what to do, but you're also paying attention to when I'm not paying attention. So, when she got here, the first thing we did, knowing some of these little behavioral quirks, start to note, note everything down. This is, these are what we see as far as behaviors. And then to do things like a quality of life assessment. So, we assess her physical being, and we assess, we, uh, assess her mental. So... What we found in the quality, she had a pretty high quality of life on the, the behavioral. Um, she seemed somewhat limited because she swallowed lead. They had to surgically remove it from her. So um, she has a little damage probably to her brain from lead poisoning. It doesn't take much. Um, as we well know, in certain parts of the country where they have lead in their water. Um, <clears throat> right? It is ignorance of Bob's nature that turned Bobaloo into a living gargoyle. Bob's would-be parents made a hasty choice and found themselves in living hell, torn between guilt and frustration. I have seen the joy in Bobaloo's eyes now that he has a new life with me as his companion. To see Bobaloo love and trust again is worth the effort of a lifetime. But, once again, Bob is heading toward the pain of separation. My heart nearly broke the day. I discovered that he was heading toward a cloacal prolapse, that his life will be cut short. To find love and acceptance and then have it stolen away from you by failing health is too much to bear. We can slow the progress of his failing health, but we can't stop it. He will need several surgeries, and eventually, Babalu will die. We want to give him the best possible life until that day. His surgeries will become progressively more expensive over time. Won't you please lend Babalu a hand and donate to his medical fund today? Our donation button is on our webpage at www.chloesanctuary.org. Just be sure to say, for Bob, in the notes when you donate. So we take the weight, 
and we we examine the poop the first day especially to see what's going on we want to kind of set a baseline for it and over the first week as she's eating and adjusting to the food you watch the poop to see that nothing bad is happening that don't chew on my leg <coughs> no 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 hey <coughs> now by nippy in his case all he's doing is you get old, you get spots on you. Well, every spot is something that he tries to take off your body. So he's not trying to hurt me. He's trying to actually fix me. Yes, I know. So you want me to toss that? You want me to toss it? You want me to toss it? Oh, hold on to the bird in midair. Ah! Hold on to the bird in midair. Hard to toss it when you do that. Ah! So... You set these baselines, and then with her, because she has feather destructive behavior, and as you can see, she's her keel, which is the bone that goes down the, her chest, is, is visible. And she only has down feathers, and she's missing some on the center, but she only has down feathers down the chest. She chews right up here on the top of her wings. She's broken off some of her uh, covert feathers. Sorry, sweetheart. Come here. Come here. Step up. Come here. Step up. Come on. Quit getting over there to the camera. Stop that. Stop it. You're a pest. But you know it. So she's missing feathers here. She chews her leg feathers as well. Now, we, we started her out at 0.12 milliliters of halperidol that Do it a couple more times. If he, if he keeps this up, I will have to put him up because he's just focused on getting that, that tripod. I don't want to put you up, so stop. Okay? I mean it. I'm serious. I don't want to put you up. So you'd be good. Okay? You're fun to have out. I like having you out. Pretty much like every having everybody out, but... I don't have that much longer with you, so I don't want to have to put you up, okay? So stop being a pain. Yeah? I know. It's fun to mess with that stuff. I know, Bob. So we started her out at 0.12, and she was still doing some plucking. So every two days, raising it 0 0.01 milliliters. She's now at point She's now at 0.17. And... <laughs> These two are the same species, by the way. Uh, she's now at 0.17, and she's not plucking anymore. It's all right. Uh, hey, hey, now you guys be nice. You guys be nice. You guys be nice. Ah, 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 ah. None of that. Okay, scoop. You be nice to him. That's... I'm creating an interaction. I allow them to get close. I allow them to do a little bit of posturing. You don't go down there. No. I know what you're doing. No. You stop it. You say you, you're going to raise you raise the dosage by 0 0.01 milliliters until you get to the point where they stop plucking. And that's a baseline. You're gonna, you may have to go up or down from there. You know, obviously, if they get a lot calmer and you can tell they're not picking, you can go down and look to see if they'll stop. Now, there's an exception to that. If she was actually mutilating, if she was cutting her own flesh, I'm not going to, once I get her to stop picking, I'm not going to go below that level for quite a while because I did that with sugar. I got her up to a baseline and then I dropped her down and then she just tore into herself. So, um, when you get a mutilator that's actually cutting their own skin, you get a, hey, 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 hey. What are you doing? No, 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 no. Come here. No, 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 no. Go on over there. Bob, don't do it. Don't do it. Get over here. Get over here. Oh, is that the problem? You can't get it in there? I'm sorry. Why don't you sit right here? It's all right. It's all right, Lucy. It's okay. Bob, get over here and play. Go on, get over here and play. Go on. See, I didn't realize she was she was sitting so tight over here. I didn't realize she was in his spot and he couldn't sit there. So he was off to 
goof with other stuff. It's all right, I got your back. You're okay, literally. So it's important when you have a bird that's exposed their keel, uh, the next step is for them to realize that by cutting their own skin, they can you know, cause their endorphins to start flowing. And once they get that, that high, then they're gonna continue to do it. So it's important to stop her. Uh, the, the end result of feather destructive behavior is almost always death from infection in the long run. So we have to stop it. Otherwise, physically, she's fine. She went through, she's had her medical and everything came through, flying colors. Um, as I say, she has a, an issue with uh, having had lead in her system. And she has this feather destructive behavior, but that's stopped now. We don't know. He, so far, I've seen a few feathers come in, but we don't know what she's going to look like in six months. And it's not something to focus on. What, what, what I do every day is check to see if there's any feathers in her cage at all. Any feathers. And that means you've got to keep the cage really clean. If there's any feathers in there, or if you see her turning around and yanking on her feathers, then you have to increase her dose. And right now, it doesn't look like we're going to have to do that, will we, Pippa? Anything else to say, Pippa? I know, Pip. I know. That's a Pip. It's all right, Lucy. It's all right. You always have whoever's relinquishing the bird bring the food they have with them and any toys that they're used to having. So you have an idea what kind of toys they have and the food they've been eating. Um, these are things you're going to be showing the vet, too. Um, of course, you need to have them vetted before you bring them in, and you need to quarantine them for 30 days. Um, so... That's important because you never know what kind of disease they have with them. Diseases, I know, diseases move through these guys pretty fast. So 30 days is a good enough quarantine. Make sure they get all their vetting. That's all been done. So we've talked about that in other videos. Now, she was eating Zupreme and you know veggies and that kind of thing as well i had a list of all of them some nuts and stuff are you just going to tear everything up today you big toad you're making a big mess don't do that be nice to her be nice to her okay just be nice you've just got that on your mind you big toad don't want you doing it so don't even think about it so what I've done is I've given her the Zupreme. She has the colored Zupreme fruit-shaped stuff is what she's used to eating. And also the, the Zupreme veggies. And I'm giving her the same thing everybody else gets along with it. She gets the Rowdy Bush. She gets a, a banana chip. She gets a, a couple of pine nuts. And she gets a little bit of papaya. Just a little assortment of things. A few sunflower seeds. That kind of thing. Found out she really loves those pine nuts, and they're awfully good for them, actually. They're expensive, but good for them. Um, I don't give them the ones that are out of the shell. I give them the ones in the shell. She likes them, so she's getting an extra. Um, everybody gets their own mix. You know, we have a basic mix, the rowdy bush for everybody. Um, and then whatever they're used to. And in this case, she's eventually going to transition over to the rowdy bush and what everybody else eats. Probably six months, maybe a year. She'll still get her regular, what she's used to. And, and uh, I know that people do transition them faster, but hey, hey, no, no. Get down from there. Get down. Come here. You stay away from him. That's not good. You don't want to be near him. Uh uh, no, he'll he loses it, kid. He loses it. You can't go up there with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know it's kind of warm today here in California, so it's kind of nice to have a fan. Are you a built-in fan? Are you? Are you my built-in fan? And yes, in a month, I know her well enough to put my face right up to her beak. Yes, I do. I don't touch her beak with my, my lips because human bodies are disgusting compared to theirs. And I don't want to infect her with anything. So, 
You're not going over there. You're not. Are you gonna hang on the picture again? Mm -hmm. Now, she did have, I failed to mention it, she did have one title that she, in her exam. In other words, she showed that she'd been exposed to chlamydia, um, but she, you know, she ran through the tests again and uh, she doesn't have it. But um, it took a while to get her here too, because we had to run her through so many tests. So with food, you give them what they're used to, then you add in what you normally feed your flock, and then eventually you're going to start cutting back on their food. I don't cut back right off the bat. I wait until they seem like they're really part of the flock and they're comfortable. And once they have that comfort level, then I'll uh, start cutting back on their food. Um, I also give them more food than they need. You are not going to mess with her. Uh-uh. What are you doing over here? No. Come on. Come on. You go somewhere else. Come on. I love you, but I don't want you over here with the female. This is one reason we usually don't have males and females in the same room. Bob's an exception. Bob, Bob won't go for the females. Um, I have to keep away from Coco, but that's because he tends to bother birds on their tail area. He's not really uh, trying to mate with her, though. Are you, Bob? Are you trying to eat the futon? That's not good. Now, the other thing is, you know, since that's not going to work. Snowball, if I have to take you out of here, I will. I don't want to. You behave. And you stay there. No more flying over to try to get a, a bird. A poor little bird. Snowball, no. 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 That's negative punishment right there. Taking away his balance to try to to reduce or extinguish a behavior. Right, Snowball? He's being a little dangerous to the females. That's the best thing to do in this case. If you don't focus on something else, you're leaving. Snowball, be good. Oh, you're pacing, Pippa? Okay. So... You need to make sure that you weigh them every day, especially when they first come in. It's uh, some people weigh them once a week, but I like to weigh them every day. Especially with new birds, you need to know what their weight is. And if they're on um, Haldol to stop them from picking, then it's critical for the first couple of weeks anyway to make sure that they're not losing weight. Because it does have a tendency to make them lose a little bit of their appetite. Not necessarily their... Um, it doesn't necessarily make them less active. As one gentleman who has been communicating with us over Facebook said that he's thinking about dropping the level of the Haldol for his bird, who's a mutilator, a little bit because the bird is so active. Um, so people think it's going to make zombies. No, not necessarily. Um, it can actually reduce inhibitions on some birds. It depends on, you know, each bird's a little different, so... Some, no, Bob. Some birds, they will re reduce their inhibitions and they'll get more active. Other birds will just become calmer because that's, they're, they're less nervous, okay? See, Bob's not nervous with anything. If you were to give him that, he would be just a raging crazy person. He'd have no restrictions at all, right, Pippa? You are not doing that. Get out of there. No. No. Chloe. Going back. Ah! Nice. 
I know, Pippa. I know. How are you doing down there? You okay? All right. So, doing a quality of life assessment, taking pictures, so you have pictures of their condition, uh, keeping a little notebook with all their, you know, any behavioral issues you see. Now, when, when Chloe came over and I just picked her up and tossed her, she's a bird and she can fly. Now, I wouldn't toss a bird that couldn't fly, but with her, if I toss her, she'll fly. And uh, I figured she'd fly to her box, but she flew over to the chair and bumped the, the camera. Um, it's not a problem if you toss her. She's not. She doesn't get upset by it. So, um, and I will often do that. We have a game where I play toss the bird. So, the birds that can fly and are used to it. Lorelai gets tossed. She loves to get tossed, don't you, girl? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. There's a male in the room, and you're just all focused on that. So over this time, the last month, she's gotten a lot more active, a lot more. I want this and I want that, which is what she's doing, kind of right like, you now, displaying over here, aren't you, baby? Trying to get my attention, aren't you? You're trying to get my attention, I know. Chloe doesn't like that, so that's why Chloe flew over. She doesn't like anybody getting my attention, right, Chloe? I'm not actually touching your beak. I know. I know. I love you too. I love you too. So with her, <clears throat> she's quite extroverted. She's playing with toys a little bit. So we're focused on getting her to play more with toys because when she first got here, she wasn't showing much of an interest. Um, we were told she didn't play with toys, but when they first get to a place, they you know a new place, they they act differently. So she's starting to play with toys. <clears throat> I am putting her on perches with things to do rather than just holding her so that she'll get used to it. With cockatoos, you should always work to get them to, to play by themselves anyway because it's it's easy to get them to step up. It's just hard to get them to play with, with other birds or with themselves, so, or, or with toys, so. You know, but that's the pick. So we're gonna focus on trying to get her, going forward now, to get it so that she is better with females, female humans, that she plays more with other birds. She's not bothered by other birds, but that she interacts with them better. You saw what she did with Bob. Bob's trying to be, you know, he's, he's being a male, being positive, trying to get her attention, and she's, and she's kind of pushing him away and acting a little aggressive. Lorelai, you're not going up there. Well, you can hold the button there if you want. That's what you want to do. You okay, Lucy? You all right? You okay? You okay? You just don't know what to do. That's all right. She won't hurt you. Bob's not going to hurt you, and neither is Lorelai, okay? They're not. So going forward, working with her to get her more social with the birds, to get rid of some of the comfort food that she's got. We're going to take our time with it, but that's a goal, to, to make it so that she eats what everybody else does. She'll be allowed to have her own favorites. If she likes, if she likes the pine nuts, so she'll get extra pine nuts. If we find out she likes banana chips, she might get an extra banana chip. She has to make sure she eats her, her uh, pellets are the most important thing. But get out of there, get out of there, Pippa, Pippa, get out, Bob, get off my arm. Thank you, Pippa, get out of there. Come on, get off the door. Come on, Pip, come on, Pippa, come on, Pip, get off the door. Come on. Get off the door. <laughs> Get off the door. What do you think you're doing? You're being silly. You're so silly. You're such a silly girl. Now, because she had problems with, with leg poisoning, uh, and because of her, her feather destructive behavior, let go so I can grab Bob. Let go. Ouch. Uh, <laughs> your feet. Bob, get out of there. Over here. Come on. Beach, you all right? Now come over here. Come on, Beach. Whoops. Come over here. Come over here. There's snowballs over there. You can come over here. Bob, be nice to her. Be nice to her. Come on, you leave her alone. Okay, guys. It's all right, Peach. Do you want some of your wood that you want here? Here. Wood, a few cards. That's what you like to chew on. You want a bigger piece of wood? Well, that's the stuff you like. 
Yeah. And then keep working it to try to get what feathers she we can back on her. So she'll look more like a bird. And once she has her flight feathers in, we'll, we'll start working with her so she flies a little better. And once she gets used to flying, the odds are she's got, not going to be so interested in picking. Maybe we can drop down the medicine a little bit. It's not critical that we drop the medicine down as long as her behavior is normal. It's not critical. So The main thing is to come up with a game plan. It doesn't have to be anything particularly crazy, but look into the future what kind of behaviors you want. I want her to be a little more comfortable playing by herself and a little less clingy. Um, to respond better when told not to do something and also to let go. Right now she grabs really tight. That may be due to the damage to her brain from the lead, but we want to get that grabbing down to a bare minimum. There's no reason she has to hold on that tight. Um, but it's possible that physically she's she's doing it because of the, the damage to her brain. So, uh, But we're going to work to see if we can get that changed. Yeah, so we'll change in her food, a little change in her diet, get her feathers back on her, I'll make sure she, her weight's good, make sure her poop stays normal, and that her behavior is like the grabbing behavior, the overly clinging behavior, um, the trying to get attention behavior, which was what the going to the door thing was, that all that kind of stuff gets reduced. So we, we'll be reducing those. We call that extin extinguishing. So we'll be punishing those behaviors, and others will be reducing them or extinguishing them. That's all it means. And then her positive behaviors, we're going to just keep encouraging them. Where, where she's, like this one right here is a positive behavior, isn't it? When she talks and flaps her wings, that's a positive behavior, so we'll, we'll encourage that, right? So they come in, you assess them. You, you, you look at the quality of their life, how, if they have a problem with something, let's say they have a foot that doesn't work right, you're going to note that down. If, like, if, if for some reason there, there's a body part that's got something wrong with it, you note all that down. You look at whatever behaviors they do, like with her, the clinging, you know, getting on you clinging, the holding with the feet, the, um, the flapping of the wings to get your attention, which is not a bad thing. You can actually work with that. That's okay. Um, but it indicates, in this case, she's trying to draw your attention. So you want to, in her case, she's very focused on me. And I want to make it so she's a little more involved in the rest of the world. She's not afraid of other birds, but I want her to react with them better. Not, not to do what she did to Bob a little while ago, which is try to push him away. So make a game plan and examine them for the whole month. Keep an eye on what's going on, knowing that that behavior will change. It's going to change. And when you see something that looks like it might be a problem, catch it right away. Start withering that or punishing that behavior and encouraging another beha behavior to replace it. Uh, in other words, if they were chewing your, your uh, drapes, then you want to give them something else to chew on. If they like chewing on cloth, find something that's that's uh, like a towel or whatever they will chew on um, and have them chew that or get them to chew wood. But this is a time when you want to assess where they stand, well, how, they, how they come into you, look and see where they are and see what direction you want to move them in. Okay? And you want a bird to have a wide variety of experiences. So I'm watching him because he tends to get a little rough on the females. You're not going to get over here, so you can back off. I love you, but you're not coming over here, okay? All right? I love you, Snowball. You're a good bird. You're my little buddy, but you aren't coming. No, no, you don't do that. No. Don't start looking at the females. Come here, step up. Step up. Go back over here. Go on. Go play. Go play. Working with him, there's an example, working with him so that he doesn't focus on the females and try to attack them. He gets friendly at first and then he attacks. So, don't know how much can be done. The things I've read say it's once they get this kind of behavior, it's really hard to change, if not impossible, but we're working on it. 
So that's where we want to take Pippa. Want to make her uh, a little bit more uh, gregarious with the flock and more willing to play by herself. Get her to eat a little, eat the kind of food that we normally give the birds here. And it'll take time. We don't expect that to happen. And in six months, take her in for another exam because she does have special needs. Bob, you're not going to do that, so stop it. You're a pest. Now with Lucy, Lucy came with her, the cage she was living in, so she was familiar with her cage and she's comfortable in it. Or with Pippa, when she got, you know, she came here and got into a new cage, it was a bit of a, just weird for her. She didn't know what quite what to think. And uh, so she's been moving back and forth between two cages so that she gets a feeling that she's not stuck somewhere. She likes her cage, but it's not really home for her yet. So we're, we're working on making her feel good. She gets a lot of treats in that cage when she first goes in, don't you? You get your sun. You get your pine nuts and you like your banana chips. So you get a, she gets a banana chip and a couple of pine nuts when she goes in that cage to make her feel better. Right, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is the little Lucy. Now Lucy came from an environment that was quite different. There were a lot of people. Okay, she was at a veterinary hospital, so she saw people all day long. She's used to being out where customers could see her and running around and being involved in things a lot of the time. And she came here, and all of a sudden, she's away from people. There weren't any other birds there, so she she's away from people. And now she's got all these birds around her, so she's nervous about the birds. <coughs> and we're making that... No. See how, see how she reacted? She immediately opened her beak. Now, when she came here, she had a couple of problems. The first one we had to take care of was she had a respiratory infection. From day one, she was sneezing. And so I took her in and we did a CBC, a complete blood count. And it was elevated slightly, not a lot. It came back that she had uh, a bacterial infection in her lungs. So she was on amoxicillin for seven days which was strange because Bob had come up with one. I mean, they weren't even around each other for more than a day, so he didn't get it from her. But he had one, she had one, and they apparently weren't the same. I mean, when we ran the CBC, it was different strains of bacteria. But um, So we had to take care of that. And once she got calmed down from, from that experience, then uh, it was time to start working on other things. Um, so um, it should be level, kind of like your lower lip is, like this, it should be level across there, maybe a little curve, but that's about it. Well, she had an extended base that was coming up off of her mandible, it was about a half inch too high. It was like a shelf. So that got leveled, and then we, we shortened the upper mandible just a little bit. That wasn't really a problem, but now she can eat better. She can close her beak when she wants to, can't you, baby? Can't you? She says, I'm not used to closing my beak. I've had it open for a long time. So we got those physical problems taken care of. You want to take care of the most important ones first. Um, you don't want to frighten the bird too much. So she got all taken care of with the physical stuff. Her poop didn't look good when she first came here. Um, <clears throat> she had diarrhea, which is the breaking up of the, the solids. So after the amoxicillin treatment, her poop became normal, and it remains so. Right, baby? Right, baby? And when she came here, she was on <clears throat> 0 0.08 uh, milliliters of the Haldol that we started her on, because she has picked herself. Her chest is basically naked, and it's not going to grow back. It doesn't look like there's any chance that it's going to grow back. The follicles are dead. If he goes too long, then that happens. 
And wherever they work, they're going to keep spreading it out and spreading it out and spreading it out. And then the first time they actually catch the skin and realize that by pinching it and making it bleed, they can they can cause the endorphins to start flowing and feel better, then, then you got a problem. So <clears throat> we've got that stopped now. She's at 0.12 milliliters. And at that level, she's not picking. So I figure, I'm guessing that when all is said and done, she'll probably sit at 0.09 milliliters my guess but right now it has to be a little higher because she's still nervous about all these birds now she was outgoing when she first got here and got a little quieter over time because she got exposed more and more to the birds that are here my baby her QOL was high the only negative on her physical body was the temporary uh, respiratory infection and the fact she has feather destructive behavior <clears throat> which it's also listed under the behavior side. It's a physical problem, but it's also a, a behavioral problem. She didn't play with toys when she came here. So we're working with her now. She's starting to play with toys. That's something we're working, I failed to mention, that's something we're working with her too. You can tell in the first couple of days, you put toys in there, and if they don't chew the wood, and, and you don't see pits of the pieces of the toy, then they're not, you know, they're not interested in toys, so you have to work on that. So we're working with that with Pip as well, to get her to work with toys. Right, baby? So, Rel, she was an extrovert when it came to dealing with people but introverted when it came to deal with birds and set up a territory around herself about a foot wide. Now you can see she's got a tail right next to her beak and she's okay with it. So that's a big change. She's become a little more introverted. And it's because she's being exposed to all these other birds. If you leave her alone for a while in her cage and then you come, she wants to play. When you put her in a room with a bunch of birds, she becomes an introvert for a little while. Kind of trying to stay away from everything, don't you, baby? Her diet was Nutriberries and um, Harrison's, the regular adult Harrison's. And I have found that she likes... She was getting the cockatiel Nutriberries. I have no idea why. Uh, maybe it was because her beak was misshapen and she was having trouble eating the bigger ones. But she likes the ones for the parrots now, and she likes the ones that have the, uh, she likes the pepper ones. So she gets pepper Nutriberries at the Ratty Bush and the Harrisons and all the other little treats. She really likes the pine nuts. So right now, as comfort food, she gets an extra bunch of pine nuts every day. But eventually we'll reduce that a little bit. We also have not, on either of these two birds, we have not yet established what their training treat will be. Once we figure out what the training treat is, we take it out of their diet <clears throat> and we use it only when we're training them. And again, we took pictures, what she looked like in the beginning, and she has her quality of life assessments. We just did another one and her quality of life's gone up a little bit. She's not picking. She's a little happier than she used to be. She's only nervous when she's around other birds. Right, Pippa? Now, one of the things, too, is that you look at their environment and see what you can add. And in her case, today, it just happened today, but she climbed out of her cage, which she does, and she usually hangs on the side of it, or she sits there and just walks, watches you walk by. Once in a while, she'll grab, you'll, she'll grab your clothes and hitchhike on your body. Um, but today, she climbed down and she got underneath her cage, and I had some paper and stuff down there, and she just got into the paper, and she was sitting down there. So I thought, well... It wouldn't hurt to put a box in her for. It wouldn't hurt to put a box in her cage for a while, and I put a box in there, and she, with an open top though, it has a little bit of an edge, but it's an open top. She sits in that box, and that's where she's playing. So, by being observant, seeing that she was getting under there into a kind of a dark hole, I gave her a box to sit in, and she she seems to really appreciate that. Now, sometimes if they start showing a whole bunch of mating behavior when you do that, you know, they're getting on you, they're fanning their tail. In the case of a female, they're vibrating then or clucking, then you probably need to take the box out. 
and anything else that might be stimulating them. But that's not an issue for her right now. She doesn't do any vibrating and she doesn't show any real st stimulation. I can touch her on the back. It doesn't bother her right now. If you haven't had training in applied behavior analysis, if you're, if, then you don't want to be touching them anywhere except their heads. Um, under certain circumstances, like in here where she's scared, touching her back just comforts her. Okay? You don't want to play that game because if you don't know their psychology terribly well, you can get them mated to you, and you don't want that. Okay, because once they become mated to you, their behavior becomes protective. And when they're protective, they will bite, they will scream, they will fly at people to protect you. Um, so you don't, want to get, you don't want to get them mated. So, of course, we're just trying to establish this kind of a student-teacher relationship. And, and sometimes they're the teacher and you're the student. Sometimes you're the teacher and they're the student. But that's where you really want to be. So that's what I'm trying to establish with her. And get her to where she's comfortable around these other birds. She never would have sat. When she first came here, there's no way she would have sat with her Pippa's tail that close to her face. She wouldn't have done it. So looking forward with her, we want to get her more comfortable around other birds. Um, not as defensive and get her where she'll start preening the other birds, the same as with this one here. Get her a little more active in these situations. She tends to be really quiet when you got cameras and birds all around. She's better when there's no cameras in the room and it isn't bright light. We don't run the bright lights in here. Normally we have this little light over here on. That light is on and then there's some movie on for them. And they like that. They enjoy it. They play. The darkness, the darker environment is better. Um, if you can afford it and you can get those lights that you can control with your smartphone. Um, there are some now you don't need a hub for, so you can change the mood by changing the color of the light. You can bring the lights down. You can do it all just from your phone. Um, that would be good for them. In certain circumstances, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to change the lighting around. But we have the one little light over here, and we, it, it, it shot up against the wall, and then the other light comes from the, the TV itself. So. so what we're shooting for with her is for her to get over to the diet that we use. She can still have some of her normal stuff, and Harrison's is great. If she's going to eat that, she can have that as long as she wants it. We don't... In fact, Bob and Roman, who both came from the same place where they feed Harrison's, um, the same hospital, uh, they still get Harrison's in their bowl. Uh, I noticed that they eat the Harrison's along with the rowdy bush, and that's good. They're both good, so that's fine. We're gonna. The other thing we're shooting for here, here is for her to get her feather condition back. As you can see, it's. Uh, I don't know if you remember what she looked like, but her. Feather condition on her back is looking much better. And give her another six months, she should have all of her feathers looking normal. The feathers on her chest um, are still a little picked up here. That's going to change. That's what we're shooting for. With her, too, she, she seems to lack a little confidence. This one here is pretty confident in herself. But this one here is not. She's not that confident around these other birds. So... Um, she seems to defend herself out of, would you stop that, Bob? Cut it out. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. What are you doing? Why are you trying to eat the futon? Because you can. Because you can. Ah! So we're going to try to establish more confidence with her where she's a good example. Okay. When Coco came here, she was like this. You're looking around like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Oh, and she was just, she'd standoffish, and now she's like, these are cameras in here. She yells at them, and then she goes up and demands to be petted. Um, with people she first meets, she'll nip them if they don't pet her, if they stop petting her. But with me, what she does is something much worse. What she does with me is if I stop petting her, she, I look, she'll sit there until I look at her, and then she'll make this most disgusted face and turn and walk away, and then she won't let me pet her. And until you've been shunned by an umbrella cockatoo, you don't know what shunning is. 
So that's pretty much what we're doing with these guys. We we would we'll do a quality of life assessment every month for the six first six months, and then after that we do a quality of life assessment every six months. We take pictures pretty regularly. Some most of them are cutesy pictures, but we do take ones that Yes, I know. It's all right. That's just Bob. He wants to preen you. He just wants to preen you. He just wants to preen you. That's all he wants. He's not trying to hurt you. He just wants to preen you. He won't hurt you. There you go. See, he's preen. He's preen. Good girl. See, that's okay. Good girl. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right, Bob. It's all right. It's all right. One more time, Bob. Just real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead, just one more time. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, you did really well. Good boy, Bob. Now, they finished on a good point. She didn't attack him, and I pulled him away, so everything's cool. Okay, Bob, go down here and play. Go on. Go play. That's a good boy. Good. Yes, you are a good boy. You are a good boy, Bob. Even though you pestered me for the whole episode, you're a good boy. So I hope those tips help. Uh, Bob <laughs> kept drawing my attention away, so I hope I covered everything. Um, and this one over here, he's a good listener, and he's a good bird. I, I love that snowball. He's a sweet boy. But he's just not good around females. So you did very well. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, good boy. Okay. Who's going to say goodbye? You got. You two want to say goodbye? All right. I'm just going to leave you right here to say goodbye. Lucy and Pippa say goodbye. Yeah, say goodbye to the people. Okay, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter, at sign Chloe Sanctuary, and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. So science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower.